I would describe Mary Ward as a woman who was of her time and place, who understood the needs of her time and place, and responding to those needs was able to move beyond them. For thousands of her followers from around the world, Mary Ward remains truly unique and inspirational. Her story is that of both visionary and victim. Well, I think Mary Ward is an incredible woman, and it has almost taken 400 years for that to be realized because of how she was treated. Yet, even though she was suppressed, even though she was put down, she still has survived through her companions and um, right on to this day. I had during those years burning desires to be a martyr and my mind for a long time together fixed upon that happy event. The suffering of the martyrs appeared to me to be delightful to attain in a great good. My favorite thoughts were how and when. Mary Ward refused to conform to conventional life. After refusing to marry, she chose the religious life. But not only that, she set about founding her own institute and helping those in society who were in greatest need. Mary Ward had that dream and vision that women in time to come would do much. And the root of that for her was opening the schools and educating girls and providing a need for, or addressing the need that was there in giving the girls an opportunity to study. Being alone in such extraordinary repose of mind, I heard distinctly, not by sound of voice, but intellectually understood these words. Take the same of the society. These few words gave so great measure of life. I suppose when you look back historically, there's one key date. 1611, where she has this idea to take the same of the society, which meant for her to imitate the society of Jesus. That was a big problem for women, because Ignatius of Loyola, who had founded the society, said that these constitutions were not to be held for women. Women were not to share these constitutions. To gain acceptance for her work, she frequently traveled by foot to Rome for audiences with the Pope. But instead of being embraced by her church, Pope Urban VIII served a damning bull of suppression, which shut her houses down and tore her reputation to shreds. The bull is extraordinarily violent in its language. It describes the members of the Institute as um, poisonous growths in the Church of God that had to be torn from the roots, lest they spread themselves any further. I have been publicly accused and declared a heretic, schismatic, obstinate and rebellious by Holy Church. I have been arrested as such and driven to the point of death by the ailments that the nine weeks of imprisonment to which I have already been subjected have already caused me. The infamy of being marked out in every place as being guilty of such wickedness and have been thrown into the jaws of death by order of the Holy Church for supposedly having committed such atrocities has resulted in great suffering being inflicted upon all the members of our company. So there was a public disgrace in that for her too, from which I'm not sure in her lifetime she could ever really have recovered. But for Mary Ward, that, that suspicion was probably the most hurtful thing. That the church that she had sought to help was the church that had condemned her as a heretic. All over the world, the Institute that Mary Ward founded hundreds of years ago continues the enduring legacy of a woman who had the most incredible faith and force of will and her belief in the education of women. From Heretic to Saint tells the inspirational story of Mary Ward and the legacy that is still alive and blossoming in various countries such as Sudan. We follow the sisters who continue her work in education and in projects that help the most vulnerable in society. For me the story of Mary Ward is a story of struggle it is a story of courage. 
it is a story of love and it is a story of perseverance. And it is a story that centers on an ordinary woman who really did extraordinary things. Thank you.